In the fall of 1995, I was driving home from work on a two-lane country road. It was about 6 p.m. and starting to get dark. I had just crested a small hill and saw something moving in the ditch on the other side of the road. At first, I thought it was a dog, but I realized it was too big and too fast as I got closer. It was running with its back hunched up but still quickly clearing the barbed wire fences along the broad shoulders. Its gait reminded me of jack rabbits I had seen on TV documentaries, moving like a cross between a trot and a gallop across open spaces. Just as I was about to pass it, it whipped around and looked at me. The eyes were orange, glowing in the headlights, and there was a long snout with sharp teeth. I slammed on the brakes and skidded to a stop. The creature disappeared into the ditch on the other side of the road. I sat there for a few minutes, my heart pounding, before starting up the car and driving home. I never told anyone about it until now. Even with my military training, I don't feel like I was prepared to see something like that. I've been kicking myself for not getting a picture or even slowing down long enough to get a good look. This isn't something I can tell people about because they won't believe me. Can you blame them? It's not something I want to believe in either, but my eyes didn't lie. About two weeks later, and about 20 miles away from the first incident, I was driving home around 11.30 p.m. when my headlights suddenly illuminated a prominent figure standing in the middle of the road. It had been raining most of that day, and the road was wet, but there were no other cars around. This time I stopped about 100 feet from the tall creature that was standing in my headlights. It seemed to be staring at me and didn't move or make a sound. After sitting there for a few minutes, it simply turned and walked down the embankment on the side of the road and disappeared into the darkness. Again, I was utterly unnerved by the experience, and again I didn't tell anyone. I don't know what it was that I saw, but it wasn't anything natural. I was more shocked that I saw two separate entities on this same road, only 20 miles away from my first encounter. Maybe something is going on out here in the middle of nowhere. It's hard to say for sure, but what I can tell you, something is most certainly happening. I wish to remain completely anonymous for this report. This occurred years ago on base. I wish you could show this to other people on base who might have experienced something too. I don't know what it was but it sure was terrifying. You may post my real name for this report, but please omit the location and any reference to the military branch. It happened four to five years ago somewhere in North America. This is very long overdue as I've been putting off telling this story because of its upsetting nature. There are many details that are still crystal clear though because of how frightening it really was. I enlisted in the Canadian Army shortly after high school, earning a spot in the Royal 22E Regiment, the Van Dues, Frenchful, the 22. After being deployed multiple times overseas to Afghanistan and Haiti, I was eventually selected to become a member of the 1st Commando Regiment. The training for this position was extremely physically demanding and mentally draining because it involved an immense speed at learning new skills, especially languages. I still hold several qualifications in different military practices today, but unfortunately not with that unit. After completing my tour with one CDR, I decided to re-enlist as a reservist with the Van Dues Regiment since they were recruiting members for their special force. For those who are unaware, Canada possesses what is considered to be one of the most elite special forces groups on Earth, known simply as Joint Task Force 2, JTF2. They are widely acknowledged as being more secretive than even Delta Force and DevGru. You may have recently heard about them because they successfully captured the terrorist who attacked Parliament in Ottawa. JTF2 was established in 1993 and is composed of members from all branches of the Canadian forces. Their primary focus is counter-terrorism, hostage rescue, personnel recovery and clandestine operations, direct action, special reconnaissance and disruption. This unit is considered to be an elite JTF, one of four within Canada's government. The other three are RCMP Integrated National Security Enforcement Teams, RCMP INSET, Canadian Security Intelligence Service, CSIS, Special Operating Agency, SOA, and Communications Security Establishment Canada, CSEC. I joined the Van Dues Reserves for this specific reason. 
I've always been interested in the paranormal and thought it would be a unique opportunity to see if any of the claims I've read about were true. I was wrong. The entire experience was nothing short of nightmarish. After spending about a year with the unit, I was approached by one of the special force commanders and was asked if I would like to join their team. This is a highly unusual occurrence because even regular members of the regiment are not often asked to join the Sadiq group, especially someone who's only been in the military for a few years. I didn't think twice about it and accepted their offer. A few months later, I found myself at an abandoned airfield in eastern Canada undergoing intense training. We were taught how to operate in all types of environments, how to handle different weapons and explosives, and how to move undetected. The training was so extreme that a lot of guys couldn't handle it and dropped out. After successfully completing the training, I was finally inducted into JTF2. It was an incredible feeling to be part of such an elite team and I felt privileged to have been accepted. We were constantly drilled in the importance of secrecy and our missions were always classified. We were never told where we were going or what we were doing until after we had completed the operation. I served with them for about two years before. Something happened. One evening, we received orders to deploy on a mission. We were flown by helicopter to the outskirts of a wooded area in rural Quebec. There was a small village nearby and we were told that something had been terrorizing the locals. The JTS2 team went into the woods while I stayed behind with some other members who were assigned guard duty. It took about two hours for any of us to hear from our comrades, but they called on me to tell them exactly where to go. To my surprise, I could barely understand their French and asked them what had happened. At first I thought it was just another code word until I heard an unearthly wail followed by several others echoing throughout forest. My squad leader said it was the sound of the Wendigo. The Wendigo is a cryptid that is said to inhabit the forests of Canada. It is a spirit creature that is half man, half deer, and is said to be able to transform into either form. It is said to be incredibly fast and strong, and can kill with just one swipe of its claws. The Wendigo is also said to be able to consume human flesh and blood, which gives it its name, meaning the Eater of Men. My squad leader ordered me to take out my rifle and to follow him. We slowly made our way towards the sound of the whales, trying not to make any noise. Suddenly, we came upon a scene that I will never forget. There were four JTF2 members lying on the ground, their throats ripped out, their bodies were mutilated, and there was blood everywhere. I could see the Wendigo standing in the shadows, watching us. It was huge, much bigger than any man, and it had long razor-sharp claws. It didn't say anything. It just stood there and stared at us with its cold, green eyes. Then it attacked. We fought with everything we had but it was too strong. The Wendigo killed three of my comrades before finally being shot dead by my squad leader. As it lay dying, it let out one final wail that still haunts me to this day. I was the only survivor and I could barely stand. My entire squad had been slaughtered and it was my fault. I never told anyone about what happened, not even the other members of JTF2. A few months later, we were sent on another mission to New Mexico. We flew into a rural area late at night and spent that whole next day in a warehouse before getting word that we would be heading back that evening big mistake. As soon as we got back to the helicopter, the pilot told us our flight home had been cancelled. There was a storm coming right for us. We turned around and started making our way back to the warehouse, but didn't get far before everything went pitch black. No moonlight could penetrate the storm clouds, and we couldn't see a thing. I heard another helicopter fly over us, but they never responded to our radio calls. We were soon swarmed by something. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. It looked like a person dressed in all black clothes and standing seven feet tall, but it moved far too fast for that faster than any man could ever hope to move. It killed three of my comrades in mere seconds and then attacked me. I fought back with everything I had and managed to kill it. So I thought. The storm cleared up the next morning, but there were no bodies of any creatures around only JTF2 members. 
They must have taken their fallen comrades with them when they left. I was the only one who remembered what had happened, and I could never forget the sight of those black creatures. I still shudder when I think about that night, and what could have happened if our flight home hadn't been cancelled. I wish to remain completely anonymous for this report. This occurred when my unit was stationed outside of New Orleans. We were part of the 175th Engineers Battalion. We were building a supply depot for the troops in New Orleans at the time. We were not supposed to be there. The whole debacle was a mistake. We were told to go to the wrong place. We were all pretty new to the army, most of us just out of basic training. I was one of the older ones at 22. We were all drilling in an open area near a forest. The room was very sparsely populated, and it felt like we were the only people for a thousand miles, which made me even more nervous. I was standing some ways away from where the others were drilling. I had my back to them, but I could hear what they were saying. I heard one of the guys say, Did you hear that? I turned around and saw all of them looking in the direction of the forest. As I looked, I saw movement in the woods. It appeared to be a person strolling as if they were sneaking up on us. We saw it very quickly, it was not a person at all. What we saw was a humanoid figure, but it had very odd features. It had gray skin and long, thin arms and legs. It had very long fingers. The creature was barely visible at first. It took a step, and it had more definition than before, and we had a clear look at what it looked like. It was as odd looking as before, with long thin limbs and fingers, but now we could see its face. It had an elongated head that came to a point at the end of its snout. Its eyes had vertical pupils, and they were glowing yellow in the dark. The creature walked out from the forest and into the open area where we were drilling. It stood there and just looked at us. We all stood there, terrified. None of us knew what to do. I looked back at the creature, and it was still looking at us dot 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 but now it seemed as if it was looking directly at me. I felt that it was saying my name, even though no words were being told. I snapped back to reality and yelled for the others to run. We all scattered in different directions. I was running towards the forest, but I could hear the creature running after me. I was so scared. I thought it would catch me and kill me. I just knew it. I ran past a tree and dove into the brush. I could hear the creature coming after me. It made sounds, but they were not human sounding at all. They sounded more like a dog howling. I was too scared to get up and run. I was so afraid. I thought it would catch me and kill me. I just knew it. My heart felt like a jackhammer as I ran past the tree, dove into the brush, and tried to make myself as small as possible. It seemed like an eternity before it finally stopped chasing me. The whole woods around me fell silent. It was so eerie, I couldn't believe what had just happened. I lay there for a long time, then, I tried to run for it. I made it back to the unit, but no one would believe me. I was branded a liar and a coward. I never told anyone else about this until now. I'm scared that people will think I'm crazy, but I know what I saw, and it haunts me to this day. I am a sea captain, and I was working on board the cargo ship, 160 feet long and 20 feet wide. I remember the day perfectly. It was a clear night with a bright moon. We were in the Atlantic Ocean, about 15 miles from the nearest shore. Suddenly, when the moon was at the highest point of its trajectory in the sky, we saw a strange light coming from the sea. It was not too bright, but we thought it was the light of another ship at first. We realized that this was wrong when the object got closer to us. Dot, 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 we could see that it was some creature with a fantastic body and a very long neck. The head did not move. It looked like it did not have eyes, only the upper part of the mouth. We all stayed on deck to observe what was happening. In a few minutes, the creature came closer, and we could see that it was about 60 meters long. It looked like an eel with huge eyes, but it was too big for any eel I have ever seen. It was very dark, and the light from the ship only made it look more impressive. Suddenly it submerged and disappeared. All of us on the boat were entirely baffled by what we saw, so we decided to keep it a secret. The next day, about 30 miles away from the previous night, we saw a different creature. This one was much smaller, about 10 meters long. It had a head like a snake and small eyes. It was swimming near the surface of the water, and we could see its body was stripped. 
that was swift and disappeared in a few seconds. We also found a dead whale with its skin ripped off. This could have been done by the creature we saw the previous night. We believe that they were after the whale, and we just happened to be in the way. We also found another dead whale, but this one had its insides removed. We stayed in that place for three more days, then we started getting into colder water, so I decided to go south to avoid the ice. I hope that I don't see any more of those creatures. I have no idea what these creatures are, but this account is extraordinary. I'm hoping that someone out there can help me to identify what was seen. We were stationed in Brazil from 1999 to 2000. Before the incident, we heard about something that had been sighted in a nearby village. Now keep in mind we were living outside of Rio de Janeiro, and this place was way out in the middle of nowhere. Two people went missing, and they finally found one of them dead. We were called in to investigate the problem, potentially dealing with something hazardous, but none of us were exactly sure what. We get to the town, and I'm paired up with the other Americans on our team. This was my first investigation, so I was pretty pumped. We go into this house that's been abandoned for years. After investigating further, we found out that the family had been killed. The mother, father, and two children, all slaughtered. But that's not even the creepiest part. We found the remains of the family dog torn apart. But what was strange was that there were these huge chunks of flesh, completely drained of blood. The area was saturated in the stuff. We followed the trail outside, where it ended at this giant burn mark, as if something had just exploded. There were also significant trail markings like something had been dragged. We continued to find more mutilated bodies of local villagers, all having their organs removed. One of the women at the scene told us that she knew what was responsible for this whole mess, a demon. We brushed it off as superstition, but I'm telling you, we were in the middle of a horror movie. I'll never forget that smell. It was like something had died and been left to rot in the sun for weeks. All the bodies, the odor, and the hot, humid jungle. The worst smell. And believe me, I've been around decaying bodies before. Not to this degree, though. After we set off further into the jungle, we found this makeshift altar. It was like someone had just set it up and left in a hurry. There were all these animal sacrifices, along with human body parts. One of us began open firing at what we thought was the demon. I'll never forget that sound. It was like something out of a movie. This large black shape descended upon us from the tops of the trees. It made a sound like a banshee screaming. As it fell, it tore the throat out of one of my teammates. I fired off a few rounds of my own. I don't know if it worked or not, but that thing did leave us alone after. We had to get the hell out of there and fast. On our way back to base, we found some tracks that didn't belong to us or anything local. When we got back to base, we reported everything that had happened. The higher-ups told us that we were to keep quiet about what had happened, or they would lock us up. I'm telling you, man, something was out there. And it wasn't anything human. When I got a chance to speak to more of the locals about it, they kept telling me repeatedly. It was a demon. A demon called Pombajira is supposedly a dark spirit that resides in the jungle. Sometimes, people will make altars to it to appease its hunger. However, it never works for very long. It will always turn on its summoners in the end. At first, I thought it was a hoax, but after seeing the dead bodies up close, I realized that whatever was responsible for what had happened wasn't human. Something big went down in the jungle, something that got hushed up, but it's out there. I'm telling you, I wasn't the only person it affected. Just a few days later, I found our team leader dead. He had hung himself. I'm not sure what we had encountered when we did, but it certainly made me a believer in the world of the paranormal. Yes, I believe demons exist now. Maybe they can be killed, I'm not sure. In December of 2012, I was staying at my family's cabin with two friends, who preferred to remain nameless. A group of us were sleeping on the living room floor because there were no more beds left. At around 1 a.m., everyone but me was asleep. I had taken a shower and come out of the bathroom when something caught my eye. The sun had gone down, so it was very dark outside, but the moon was full, so it provided enough light for me to see myself in the window next to the front door. I saw what looked like a figure wearing all black about 30 yards away, 
moving slowly toward our house. I immediately woke my friends up and told them what I was seeing. We watched it from the window for a few minutes as it moved closer to the house. We were terrified and didn't know what to do. The figure then stopped at the bottom of our porch and just stood there for a minute or two. We debated whether to run or stay when it finally started moving again, this time going back the way it had come. We stayed up a bit longer, trying to make sense of what we had seen. One friend informed me that he was pretty sure it looked like a gargoyle, but I'm not so sure. I've never seen anything like it before or since and to this day don't know what it was. I do, however, believe in the paranormal, not that I know from personal experience. That is my story. I want to add that I've served in the military for seven years and have been a police officer for five years. I am not the kind of person to make things up or see things that aren't there. In 1989, when I was stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, I had an encounter with a cryptid. At the time, I was living in barracks on the post, and one evening, I was taking a shower. As I soaked up, I became aware of something large and black moving around outside the window. A creature was peering into the window at me, and although I couldn't see its face, I could tell it was looking directly at me. It was about eight to nine feet tall and very muscular. It had long, greasy hair and smelled terrible. Immediately afterward, it jumped out of view. I freaked out, ran out of the shower, dried off, and dressed in seconds. I went directly to the security desk, but they insisted there was no one out of place on the post. The experience shook me up, and I was convinced that the creature was some demon. I never told anyone about it until now. I'm usually not a person that's scared of things, but that experience scared me. I've never been able to forget it. Also, I would like to add that I was not under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at the time. I have always been a very sober person. Witness requested to remain anonymous dot 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 for now. The interview was being conducted via email. A small team of six Navy SEALs were stationed in the jungles of Peru in 1975 where they were attacked by harpy-like beings. Several of these creatures were shot and killed, and their bodies confiscated. One seal died from the attacks. The eyewitness is one of those seals. I apologize in advance at how long my story is, but there are many details to go over, so bear with me. In 1974, before this happened, we were gearing up to go inside Lebanon, but our plans were changed and we ended up going to Peru instead. Our mission was classified at the time, so we could not tell anybody where we were going or what we would be doing. We landed in the jungle, not far, late at night, with everything that we would be needing for a long time, maybe months if things went south. We had weapons, radio equipment, medical supplies, tents, etc. Everything you think you could keep packed onto our boats. A few miles away, there was an ancient city deep in the jungle that had been part of many legends around the world for hundreds of years. It had fallen out of knowledge with most people over time, as society advanced further and further. One night, half of us were awakened on guard duty, and we heard what sounded like a bunch of people running through the woods toward us. But before we could react, they were on us, attacking with rocks and spears and claws, they had wings that looked much like an angel's, except for their body shape. The wings stretched across their backs in a cloak-like fashion, making them look all the more terrifying when they attacked. It was hard to make out much detail about them in the dark jungle. It was as almost as if you could see their winged shadows before you saw them in full light. I think that's why most of our soldiers at first thought they were demons, or something else, rather than harpies. They had claws on their fingers and toes and sharp fangs, but some had teeth that seemed to be made of stone rather than normal tooth and animal. Oddly enough, they did not appear to have eyes and they made this horrible sound when attacking, sort of like a shriek mixed with a growl. And many people said it sounded almost exactly like you would hear from a harpy in Greek mythology. This was only the first attack by these harpies on our soldiers stationed in South America. There were several more attacks after that night, during that operation into Peru. How many men of ours were killed, 
I cannot say exactly. The military always tries and covers these things up. Important details. There is documentation dealing the events that took place, but I cannot reveal it publicly. The official report put out by our military says we lost a SEAL and had 10 extra soldiers injured in the attack. What really happened is much worse than what was said to the public. The first night we were there, we talked to some of the other teams and they warned us about something they refer to as winged demons, or harpies as we like to call them. We did not think much of it, but after those attacked, everybody, even the natives who warned us about them, were very, very nervous. In the end, our troops were pulled out. I think this is why they decided at some point to mix chemicals together and drop them in that area. What happened? Well, nobody really knows for sure. But if you look for my opinion, you can go look for YouTube videos that talk about these things in the part of Peru. This was a low-budget training mission that we were on, being some of the first for this younger unit. The objective of the mission was to break into an old abandoned military compound and retrieve necessary documents left behind by a previous special forces group. After sneaking onto the property, we went through a single chain link fence gate and broke up into our designated groups. We stacked up outside a large warehouse with three garage sized doors on its front side. The two officers in charge decided on the signal to give when they opened each door. Whether it be whistle or quiet talking sounds such as wheat or pillow. I remember that most of us had suppressed M16s with standard issue ACOG scopes mounted on top. But some of us had laser scopes mounted on the rifles as well. I was part of one group assigned to breach through the door with two large windows close together on the side of the building. The officers in charge told us our designated signal for opening this door would be pillow. Suddenly, we heard an alarm sound through the night sky, signaling that the other team's task had been completed successfully. So, they gave their code, wheat. This meant that it was time for everybody to begin breaching the doors. But, there was something else out there too. At first, it seemed like somebody playing Halloween tricks with fireworks and sirens. But then, it developed into something far more serious than just that. We all looked around, searching for what it could be, when suddenly, one of the large doors on the warehouse in front of us slammed shut with a loud bang. We were startled, took aim at where we thought it came from, and waited to see if anything would happen. After about 30 seconds, after nothing else happened, I heard one of my friends say, What was that? And my immediate response to him was, I don't know, but I am not sticking around to find out. At that time, everybody fired their weapons into an undetermined position, then split up into groups and ran away as fast as possible. One group headed out back towards the single gate we entered through. Another headed left down to an open field next to the fence line, where another went right alongside another fence line, parallel to its left side. I was one of the guys who ran out towards the left field with my friend across from me. We both stopped at the fence line for a brief moment to see if everybody else got away okay before proceeding further. But when we turned around to look, our friend was gone. He just disappeared right in front of our eyes, thinking he might have fallen down somewhere after being shot by something. We decided to try and call for him, then move on towards where the rest of us had headed off to. At that time, I heard what sounded like footsteps coming up quickly behind me. So, I turned my head very fast back, expecting to find my lost squad mate wounded on the ground, making his way towards us. But instead, there wasn't anybody there, except for the two of us. And my friend looked at me with confusion and bewilderment. Then, I heard it too. It was like footsteps running really fast nearby in the grass, but nothing to be seen anywhere nearby. At that moment, my friend who stood next to me decided he was not waiting around either, so we both turned quickly 
jogging towards where our friends left off, way before us. When I got about a quarter of a mile away from where I last saw my friend, I stopped to catch my breath, look behind me again, just because something seemed odd all of a sudden. When I glanced back towards the area where he had disappeared into thin air, right between two trees up ahead of me on the other side of the fence line, I saw him running towards me. It was almost like he came out of nowhere or maybe through a wormhole or something. But either way, it wasn't good. The creature began chasing after us both. We started jogging with everything we had away from it, screaming at each other to go faster and just keep running. It seemed like this thing never got any closer than about 100 feet behind us. So, that made it easier for us to create distance between ourselves and this monster. However, every time we stopped to catch our breath again when turning around, it looked like it would be even closer when next glance occurred. At one point in my run, when I took a moment to turn back behind me, the thing was only about 30 feet away from me now. I could still see it clearly, but was terrified to let my eyes off of it for too long. We both knew if this thing got any closer than what it was already, we might not be able to escape its reach and would most likely be killed by whatever this creature was, or at least badly injured, and then eaten if we became captured. The nearby warehouse we were raiding before the encounter occurred like a very large four-story building from where I stood. Looking back towards it, so far away from the fence line and between me and it now, its height made everything seem smaller along with distance. So, when I began running again towards that area all alone now, since my friend disappeared, that four-story building now looked like it was only about 20 feet high. I remember thinking to myself that the thing would probably make short work with me if it caught up before me. The fencing beside where I ran gave way to a dirt path between two large fields leading left, which also wrapped around the warehouse. Upon reaching this, my friend who had disappeared all of a sudden directly in front of me, with his back towards me as he stood frozen still, staring at the top of the building above him. He did not even notice me standing behind him at first. When he finally did, he screamed something along the lines of, You gotta get up here. Later, after we're both safely hidden inside the building, which we only entered halfway at first, standing with our backs against one wall, my friend told me that what had happened to him during his runaway from this creature. He said that he ran as fast as he could, looking over his shoulder every now and again, at where I had been when last glimpse behind occurred. He said that he eventually made it back to my fence line area when I saw him enter out of nowhere. But at that point in time, there was a huge opening in between two large fence panels on each side, just big enough for him to squeeze through. He said when he reached the area with these large openings in between two fence panels, not only was grass on the other side where he had been standing this whole time, but also a dirt path leading out further, directly down the hill towards a nearby road. Upon entering this opening between the fences and panels, going down the dirt path where I pointed in front of me earlier, my friend told me that there was a monster shaped exactly like what we were both looking atop of when we were in the warehouse. He said that when he saw it from further away up ahead, all four legs were firmly planted into the ground with its back turned towards him, facing the way it came downhill along the stir path. He said he froze still and watched it as this creature lifted its head up into the air and took a deep sniff with its long snout. Then, lowered its back down to its chest height, again continuing to just stand there, staring out in front of itself as if watching something off in the distance or as if waiting for something. My friend said that he knew the exact moment when the creature began actually looking his way. Even though its back was turned towards him, all four feet made no sound. As soon as my friend realized that the thing had spotted him and was now coming back directly towards him, he began running like hell up this dirt path, which right back around behind where we now stood inside of this warehouse. He said he ran as fast as he could, looking over his shoulder every now and again at where I had been when last glimpse behind occurred. I still have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that this was indeed a full-on flesh and blood entity out there 
roaming around outside of our training facility, for reasons unknown to all. This creature could have been there long before we ever arrived at location weeks ago, or it could have just as easily shown up, looking for or noticing our presence. There's no way of telling what its intentions were. I believe that possibly this creature was some sort of alien being. Besides, if there's one living species on this planet, which has proven to be extremely elusive even before Neanderthals existed on planet Earth, then this very same type of living species exists right here, quite possibly in North America. I was stationed at the Marine Corps base, located in Hawaii, in Koneohe Bay. The town of Koneohe is located on the leeward side of the island and has grown up around Camp H.M. Smith, which overlooks the bay. It's a peaceful, tropical community filled with palm trees and grassy knolls, perfect for families who want to get away from it all, while close enough to Honolulu to take advantage of city amenities. When desire, during my time there, I saw many things, beautiful sunsets over the Pacific, whales breaching in the distance, visits by VIP guests, military parades where Marines do step through crowded main streets in colorful uniforms. And then, one night, I ran into something, something that I couldn't explain. I had been on a three-day leave to visit friends in Colina, a large coastal town about 20 minutes south of Kuneohe. I had gotten a ride back from my friends and was walking out of the condo where they were staying when I saw something moving towards me from near the tree line by the road. At first glance, it appeared to be someone's pet, possibly a large black Labrador or some sort of retriever. The dog-like creature walked up onto of the grassy bank that ran alongside the driveway and down across the street where it cut through some bushes and disappeared into another yard just as a car came speeding by. It wasn't until I got to the street that it hit me. This wasn't a dog, it was something else, something I'd never seen before. It was jet black, but shone like oil on water in the moonlight. It had a long, slender neck and powerful looking front shoulders with large muscles rippling as it moved. At first, I thought about going back inside and asking my friends if they owned any weird pets, but decided against it. When the creature abruptly re-emerged from its hiding place and walked across the road again to disappear, this time into another small wooded area, just as some people drove by. I brought up what I saw to my friend. As soon as I did, I could tell it made him incredibly nervous. His eyes began darting, and he got really sweaty. He wasn't sure what to say or how to respond to my questions. I could just tell by what I was saying. He knew what I was talking about. After that incident, I decided to do some research on the web, but came up with nothing other than a few eyewitness accounts, describing something similar to what I had seen. On my next leave, I visited Colina again, and this time, watched from an upstairs balcony. I saw a very similar creature as the first time. It looked a bit different, though. Strange in shape and color. The creature looked somewhat like Mangy Dog, and there were many stray dogs in Hawaii, but definitely not like any dog I'd ever seen before. The dog-like creature was much larger and more muscular, looking much more menacing than I'd ever imagined myself seeing. I never considered myself a brave person, but back then, I didn't consider the risk when I ran down into the street to follow it. I didn't think much at all. It's like seeing it, it invoked this hunger, this wanting to follow it without thinking anything through. I ran down to the street, half curious, half terrified that I would actually find this thing. As I stepped into the wood line, I began to get this sensation. Now, I believe in my whole heart, this being was telepathically communicating with me and telling me not to follow it. My military training kicked in, and without saying another word, I stood up to leave. When I reached the road, I heard a howl, which seemed to resonate between the trees, very similar to an owl's high-pitched call, but darker, much darker. I was terrified. I could feel the presence of this being. I knew it was close. Something in my gut, something inside told me to turn around. I did, and I saw it for the first time in full. 
the creature took another step towards me, revealing large paws with long, dangerous-looking claws. They glistened menacingly in the moonlight. It almost made a disgusted face at me, or a snarl, but without the sound. Something told me that this creature was not asking me to leave. He was giving me a warning. I imagined that if this thing were to speak, it would have the voice of an older man. Very stern and commanding, it disappeared into the darkness again as I turned and ran back up the hill towards my friend's condo. I explained to my friend what I just saw. We left for Honolulu immediately. While we were driving down a valley road near Kuneohe, he kept looking in the rearview mirror as if following something. He gave me a look like he was incredibly paranoid, but I figured I knew what it was. Don't worry about it, I said. We'll be back place soon. It did not seem to help him. He seemed ever more nervous, like he was started to panic. Nothing's following us, and we made it to Honolulu, without incident, so calm down. We decided to check into a hotel, and while we were resting in our room, watching TV, we started hearing strange sounds outside we could not identify. First, it sounded like scratching, coming from outside, followed by growling and other bizarre noises, all noises we could not account for. We began to scared. We tried our best to ignore it. After getting some sleep, we made plans to return to Kalina the next day. It was here that we started to hear the most bizarre and terrifying sounds. This time, it didn't stop at growling noises. We heard screams carrying through the trees towards us, which were not human. It was about this point in our investigation where we decided to pack up and leave. We made plans to meet with another friend of ours who had an interest in cryptozoology for some time. The following day, my friend came by with our other friend. They brought us coffee from a local shop around the corner. After sharing stories over coffee, they suggested that we go back into Kalina forests that night. After returning home that evening, I went on an internet search for more information about what I saw during the night. I knew what it was. I had some information on what this thing could have been, but I wanted to be sure, so I gave him a call. He explained in detail, there had been creatures on the island of Hawaii that long ago would eat people. Some people on the island referred to them as werewolf creatures. That's not the name they used. They have a name for them, but he didn't tell me. He just explained that the creatures they witnessed were violent creatures, attacking and killing several islanders. After a few hundred years, the sighting stopped for the most part. There are many who believe that these creatures still very much lurk around in the jungles, specifically the jungles. My name is Kay. I was in the military for 10 years. I'm now retired. About four months ago, my family and I moved into one of those new mobile homes on B's property, which is an old farm. Myself, my wife, our daughter, who will be two, next month, and my dog. A couple of nights ago, at around 12.30 a.m., something woke me up. I had heard nothing prior to that time, but after waking up, I heard what sounded like really loud footsteps, climbing out the crawlspace area of our home, followed by a large thumping noise, like something hit the ground running. My dog, who was usually asleep in the living room with me, also perked up and began barking at whatever was outside. I heard this same sound numerous times throughout the night, but once my wife woke up, I decided to let it go, thinking it was just some loose deer or something. About an hour went by before, I hear a series of what sounded like firecrackers going off, followed very shortly by one really loud bang, which shook our home. I grabbed my flashlight and headed towards the door when all of a sudden, about three or four very large humanoid-shaped beings go fleeing off, deep into the woods. I was so startled, as they all looked like giant men. I could not see any specific details, like clothing, facial features, or anything. It looked to me like large, human-shaped figures. I don't know where they came from or what they were doing, but it scared me. Their size alone was very unnatural. If I had to guess, each one was roughly seven plus feet tall. They were massive shapes. I sat there, shaking by what I had seen. After about 20 minutes of sitting in silence in pitch blackness, 
the only light in the home, is from a very small night light in our bathroom, where we all still felt very unnerved. The feeling of being watched was so bad, even though I saw these figures running off into the trees, my gut still told me, something was off. I never saw anything more the rest of that night. However, I was ready for a firefight, armed and loaded. I kept my shotgun right near me, the rest of that night, expecting the worst to happen. Thankfully, everything after this calmed down. It was a terrifying experience. Even my years in the army would not train me for something like this. Nothing trains you to deal with something like this. Here's some more more background info on us. We all live in a very rural area, just outside of Nashville. We had been feeding some deer out back, and I almost wonder if us feeding the deer is somehow bringing in predators. It would make sense. We haven't noticed an uptick in any other predator. However, I know with nature, where there is a food source, there will, in fact, be an eater of said food. While since moving into this house has been strange encounters, I just hope it's all done for now. I can't take more of this happening. I had stepped out of my truck to take a leak. As I was standing there, water dripping down my face and hair, I looked up toward the very far end of our perimeter. Now, whatever it was that caught my attention wasn't moving, but it only took about 10 seconds before the light struck me dead in my eyes. That's why it took me so long to respond. And then, this figure started walking toward me at an angle from about 900 yards away. I didn't have time to get scared or excited within 15 steps. He was within 20 feet of me. While he walked, another vehicle showed up on patrol with two men inside who immediately got out their side arms. I was so stunned by the whole scenario of this thing walking toward me. I couldn't speak or move when he was about 10 feet from me. Bullets began flying as the two men started shooting at this creature. It erupted in a violent rage, grabbing one of the men before being gunned down before our very eyes. They asked me if I was okay and shook me out of my trance. I told them he was trying to get me. Its skin was pale, human skin with webbed feet and hands, patches of nasty skin and hair along its body. It looked like a creature with either rotting flesh or bad mange. Either way, it looked like a bad experiment. The most striking feature about him were the eyes. He had these oval-shaped eyes, these eyes that were pitch black. No pupils or iris could be seen. I'll never forget how haunting that experience was. As far as I know, the body of that thing was taken by the military. Who knows what they did with it afterwards? Perhaps, I don't want to know.